he didn't really create male and female. He just created two groups and whatever those groups wanted to identify as or whatever those two groups wanted to do, that was completely their choice because there was no such thing as male or female. Okay, so I'll get to the meat of what she's saying in a second, but I don't think the push to blur the lines between men and women is uncalculated. You think about it, it's been the evil one's priority to distort God's design his good and proper design from day one. We are told men and women are exactly the same. There's no difference. And in fact, those terms are meaningless. You can just become one at any point. Um, there's really no restrictions around it, whatever you're feeling that day. But here's the thing. God has laid out his way of doing things. He has made us a certain way. And when we deny our design, we're not only missing out on living the life that God has laid out for us, that he is calling us into, but we're going to encounter so much resistance, hurt, and, and just unnecessary pain because we are denying and neglecting God's design. Ultimately, this distorted ideology has weaseled its way into the hearts of those that consider themselves to be Christians. They look at the word of God with a distorted lens, similar to this lady operating from a secular worldview. You see, she already has certain presuppositions about the world, about men and women, about gender, about sex. And she's simply operating out of those presuppositional presuppositions as she's reading the text. But what we're called to do is come from a strictly biblical worldview to let that, let God's word mold us and, and shape our perspective. And when we look in God's word, God made male and female and he called it very good. I don't think God was mistaken. Like maybe he was perhaps unaware of the awakening that would happen in the 21st century that we would finally realize that men and women are exactly the same and they're just socially constructed identities with no grounding in the real world. Our culture says that God was wrong, that in fact his design wasn't very good. They apply their own standard of goodness. You see, to them, what is natural and, and feels good in the moment is what is good. How God created you has no relevance to the situation if we feel differently. After all, in this worldview, we are our own gods and we control our own destiny. I will go wherever my heart leads, the confused fellow shouts as he paves the way to his own doom. To be authentic to the sinful flesh is death, but true biblical authenticity is stepping into who we were created to be. And we can only understand that when we understand the creator, when we seek to see what the creator has to say about this. God created us in his image. He has given us intrinsic worth, regardless of gender, social standing, power, or religiosity. We are all equal before God, whether male or female. He created us to be disciples, to be friends, to be family members, and to be spouses. God is inviting each one of us to step into our role and the distinction between men and women should never be downplayed. Neither one is better than the others, but they are gloriously different. The tragedy of our current culture is that they would vehemently debate me on that statement, but it is evident. If we abandon God's blueprint, our foundation will crumble. There's no doubt about it. And if we desire to see Christ-like change in our communities, in our churches, in our families, in our governments, in our countries, then it's about time we look at how God has designed our world and humanity and families and the structures that he has put in place and build something that will last. So my mission at this point is to figure out how I fit into things as a Christian, 20 something single guy. How do I fit into God's plan, into his structure, into my family, into my church? How, what, what is my role in that? And when I find that out, even when it's tough, even when it's scary, even when it forces me to humble myself, I want to be ready to step into that. And so whether you're a guy or you're a girl or you're old or you're young and, and begin to try to find out how God wants you to fit into the specific circumstances that you're in, in your families, in your churches, in your communities, and wholeheartedly jump into that. Because Look, we can keep living our lives how we want to and, and go with the flow of what feels right and feels natural. But man, when we do it God's way, when we follow him, 
there's no better way. It is so worth it. It is so worth it. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, I encourage you to give it a like and subscribe below because I'm putting out new videos all the time. The only reason that I can do that is because of the wonderful people on Patreon. It has been such a blessing to get to know you guys on there on a more personal level with our monthly live streams and other things going on. So it's so fun. Um, if you want to help support what I'm doing and helping people follow Jesus daily, you can head to the link in my description and partner with me on Patreon. Thank you again, guys, and I will see you next time. God bless.